Now we will see how to carry out mesh analysis when we have a current control current source. Okay. Again, the circuit I have taken is similar to what I had before and earlier I had shown you how to carry out the analysis when I had an independent current source in this branch. Now, instead of an independent current source, I have a current control current source of value k times i x, where i x is the current in R 1 3. Okay. Now, as you can guess, this is analogous to nodal analysis with a voltage controlled voltage source. Okay. Now, because we have studied nodal analysis extensively, by making these analogies, uh, you can uh, see the correspondence as well as reinforce your knowledge of both mesh analysis and nodal analysis. Okay. Now, what is the problem with having a current source, whether it's independent or controlled? You don't know what the voltage across that is. When we write the equation around this mesh, we don't know what this voltage is without introducing an auxiliary variable for the voltage drop across the current source. It is not possible to write KVL around this. So, as with the independent uh, uh, current source, we form a super mesh, okay, which consists of all the meshes which share this uh, current controlled current source. Okay, and then we write the equation for the super mesh. Now, what do we have there? We have to take the voltage drops here R 1 1, R 1 3, R 2 3, R 2 2 and equate that to the total voltage rise in the loop. So, I will have I 1 times R 1 1 plus R 1 3. So, if you look at it, I 1 is flowing through R 1 1 and R 1 3 and I will have plus I 2 times R 2 3 plus R 2 2. I 2 is flowing through R 2 2 plus R 2 3. Okay. The actual current through R 2 3 is I 2 minus I 3. What I am pointing out is that I 2 flows through R 2 3. There is an additional mesh current in the other direction through R 2 3 as well. And I 3 goes through R 2 3 and R 1 3 in the opposite direction. So, we will have minus I 3 times R 1 3 plus R 2 3 and this whole thing equals the voltage rise which is V 1 minus V 2. Okay, So, this is the equation for the super mesh and the third mesh is not affected by this. So, for mesh number 3, we have the same equation that we had before. this is equal 0. Now, the current control current source itself introduces another constraint. We know that the current in this minus the current in that equals this current. Okay. So, by combining uh, I 1 and I 2 in this branch, we know that this current k times I x is I 1 minus I 2. So, I 1 minus I 2 is k times I x and I x itself is the current through this branch R 1 3. So, it is k times I 1 minus I 3. So, if I take all the unknowns on the uh, left side, I will get the equation for the current control current source, which is that I 1 times 1 minus k minus I 2 plus k times I 3 equals 0. Okay. So, this is what I will have. and I can of course, write that in uh, a matrix form.
So the first row is for the super mesh. The second row is for mesh number three. And the third row is the constraint coming from the current control, current source. Okay, and I will continue to call this R or resistance matrix. But you realize that this has both resistances and dimensionless constants. Okay. So these entries are all resistances and these entries are dimensionless constants. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, this is analogous to the case of nodal analysis with a voltage control voltage source. So please go back and uh, look at that case and understand the similarities between these two. Okay.